Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And here we're going to look at an example of an ancillary statistic. And so we're going to try to show that the first order statistic divided by the nth order statistic is ancillary when Xi comes from a uniform zero theta distribution. Now, if you watched my previous video and just called ancillary statistics, we talked about a location scale distribution and this is uh, the, uh, the family of location scale distributions and this is what's called a part of a scale family of distributions anyway and if you if you understand that aspect you can instantly know that this is ancillary for this distribution but we're going to derive it from scratch so f of xi is 1 over theta right so the cumulative distribution function is xi over theta. The joint order statistic, f of x1 and f of x2, is this. So this is the permutations out front. This is the density of, of f of x1 times f of x2. That's why there's a square there. And then this is f of xn minus f of x1, and it's quantity squared. And we have this as the support. Now this reduces to this part here. Now we want to ultimately find this distribution. So first we found the joint distribution. Now we need to transform it to this. But we're going from two space to you know R2 to R1. So the technique requires us to create another variable to go from R2 to R2 space and then we'll integrate out this variable. And, and be left with this one. So when you back solve these for x1 and xn, you get this quantity here. The Jacobian is this. Take the, the determinant, you get y2. Now, I really like drawing pictures for the support. And this is x1 and x2, the joint distribution. Remember, this is the support. And x1 has to be less than x2, xn. And so this is our support, and you know it goes from zero to theta, zero to theta, and we're in this triangle. Now you label the the straight edges like one, two, three, and then you map it to this one. So here x one is zero, and x n goes to theta, and then you can, uh, based upon our transformation here, it's mapped to this this line here, and then. Uh, side 2 is mapped to side 2 here, and, and this side 3 is mapped to here. And then so this becomes the region. So then to find the joint distribution of, of y1 and y2, you plug in what you solve for x1 and, and xn here times the, the absolute value of the Jacobian. So uh, since this was the joint density, we, we plug them in here. And that's the Jacobian, and it simplifies to this uh, quantity here. Now, to find the distribution of, of y1, we need to integrate out y2. And y2, you know, is this, so we're going to integrate from 0 to theta, and it, that's integrating out y2. So, f of y1 is we take this here and plug it here and now these are constant in regards to y2 and we're just left with this you integrate um, evaluate it from 0 to theta you come up with this quantity here now notice that f of y1 is independent of theta right y1 was this and that's what we wanted to show that it's ancillary right there's no theta in here, so that is a, a, an ancillary statistic. Now, a little bit extra piece, which we're going to revisit this, this piece when we talk about Basu's theorem, which deals with complete statistics and ancillary statistics. Um, but this is extra. To, so fi to find the mean of this variable, notice that we just, this is the distribution. So we plug in a, a, a t and then enter, you know, t's the dummy variable and integrate. And then this looks like a uh, gamma distribution. 
So you add the right constants, you multiply by one essentially, then this integrates to one, what's left over is this, that's one over n. Notice it's independent of theta. Well, and it better be, because the distribution of this is ancillary, which is in independent of theta, so its mean better be independent of theta. But we're going to revisit this that example when we talk about Masseuse theorem. Now, another approach notice the two it, to show that those were ancillary is this so the joint distribution of the x's which is the product of the xi's which is 1 over theta to the n this is for all xi have to be between 0 and theta um, so let's find the distribution of 1 over theta xi now remember if you knew that it was a uh, part of the scale family of distributions then this transformation becomes quite easy but we're going to drive it so then you solve for xi then the Jacobian is uh, remember this is for x1, x2, x3 etc so when you find the Jacobian you get a diagonal matrix with theta down the middle so its determinant becomes theta raised to the n so the joint distribution of the y's, and remember, right, y1, y2, etc., is, is the joint distribution of the x's times the absolute value of the Jacobian. But you have to plug back in what is here, right? So this is the, the density, and there's nothing to plug in, so it just comes down. This absolute value of the Jacobian, those cancel, and it's left with 1, right? And if you understand scale families of distributions, then you would have known that was one to begin with. But so y is 0, 1, and it's independent of theta, right? So the density of y1 is independent of theta. So now let's look at the first order statistic divided by the nth order statistic. And remember, we're trying to prove it's ancillary. We're not. You know, I didn't ask what the distribution of it is. I just said prove that it's ancillary. So x1 is really the minimum of x1 through xn divided by the maximum of x1 through xn. Okay. Now if we multiply this by 1, it doesn't change it. So let's multiply it by 1. And now we're still looking at the minimum of this vector, you know, all of these, and the maximum. But since that's a constant, you can actually take it into each of those, and it's not, right? We're multiplying by 1, but when you look at the minimum, um, a constant doesn't affect it. So we're going to multiply each of those by a constant, right? Because the, the minimum, you, you know, is one of those, and it'll come out, and the maximum is one of those. Then the thetas will cancel, and we're just left, we're back with this. But... This is equivalent to the minimum of the y's, right? So the minimum of the y's is the first order statistic of the y's and the maximum y n, the maximum. But the distribution of y1 over y n, it's equal to the distribution of, that's x1 over x n, is equal to the distribution of y1 over y n. And these y's are independent of theta. Right, so thus this is independent of theta, which means it's ancillary. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.